I always thought of military liaisons where the rubber beats the road. We uh, originally started out with the Z Division from Los Alamos, military liaison did, uh, about two years before Sandia actually formed. And the weapons designers needed somebody to help create an in interface between the military services and the engineering compartments. I think it's pretty much been the same. It's evolved through the years. Uh, but it, the main function of it is the DOD interface um, between the, the security enterprise, uh, NNSA enterprise, and the DOD military services uh, for stockpiled uh, weapon systems, for ancillary gear that's associated with that, uh, for use control equipment, uh, and for joint nuclear weapons publications. And also they have a training role um, from both sides for the NNSA side uh, with new engineers and uh, component engineers, things like that. And on the DOD side, providing first generation training uh, for all the weapons that we deploy out in the field. So with our training, we uh, don't just train the military, we train all of the uh, nuclear weapons enterprise to include a lot of DOE's production sites such as Savannah River, Pantex, we have students come in from Kansas City, the Defense Threat Reduction Agency. We work closely with them. Uh, they're, they're our first, uh, first contact when we go out to the DOD and then the uh, individual services after that. So uh, it's very exciting to be a part of all of that. Military liaison is responsible for over 150 technical manuals that uh, are part of the Joint Nuclear Weapons Publication System, also called GenWIPS. GenWIPS is a formal publication system that governs the operation, maintenance, handling, and transportation of nuclear weapons. So nothing can be done with a nuclear weapon out in the field without using one of the technical publications that is part of that Joint Nuclear Weapons Publication System. Um, when they're, they have inspections and stuff, everything's against that document. So they have to follow word for word what is in those procedures. I think the first one that a lot of people see is field engineering, um, unsatisfactory reports, URs. The field engineering aspect can take you out to any of the bases to actually perform work or help perform work on a weapon system to do any sort of troubleshooting that you need, to execute special procedures as needed. Um, and some of it is to answer, help answer URs. Uh, in a way, it's the, it's the needed um, uh, infrastructural organizational piece to enable these diverse groups of people who are, have different educations, who are doing different kinds of work, to enable them to work together. Uh, frankly, for me, the dominant interaction with military liaison was in the weapon display area. I hosted um, members of the United States Congress, uh, high-ranking members of the administration, uh, senior members of the U.S. military, all wanting to come and see what was going on in our world. And the professionalism, the courtesy, the attention to detail that members of military liaison brought to that setting was enormously helpful in having our senior visitors walk away with the view, gee, I think these guys know what they're doing. But I think they're a little bit of the unsung heroes of the weapons program. But the part that maybe people aren't as aware of is once those weapons get out there, military liaison has a vital role in making sure that the operations and the logistics work effectively and efficiently for those weapons. To me, the, the most proud accomplishment, again, I'll mention John Hogan, but was the weapon intern program. We were losing our engineering expertise. And the military liaison was the natural place. We had all of the trainers, uh, in terms of the physical trainers, every weapon uh, replica, if you would, and, and then the people that knew the systems. I think one of the, uh, the things that most people remember are the people that were a part of military liaison. There's so many of them are no longer with us, but uh, you know, one of the most colorful characters was Al Hachigan because he started out as a staff member and then he ended up becoming the department manager. And he always had a habit of taking his finger and pointing it at you and, and giving you a lecture. And, uh, you know, I used to tell Al, I says, Al, I hope that thing doesn't go off. 
he passed away earlier this year. And he stayed in military liaison, and then he helped with a weapon intern program a whole lot. But he was here in 1962 when President Kennedy visited, and he was in the what used to be the auditorium here in this building uh, and everything. And they have this trainer that shows how a firing set works, and they would go through the whole thing. And at the end of it, when the firing set operates, it makes a great big clack really loud and everything else. And they demonstrated it before he was there. And the Secret Service and the people here at Sandia said, uh-uh, we ain't gonna do that with President Kennedy sitting in the audience. What What's unbelievable about Military Liaison is that it's such a small core group of people, but they support the, intact, the entire nuclear weapon stockpile each and every day that they come to work and watching people in the classroom and watching people out at the bases as they learn this stuff and how dedicated they are to that mission, that really makes me proud of what Military Liaison does. And we live, as everybody knows, in a very changing and dynamic world. And I think part of Military Liaison's role is to help the weapons community better understand that future world and what it means in terms of the weapons and the weapons that they're responsible for. And again, I think they do a fantastic job at doing that. I think Military Liaison's future is similar to its past, but entering an, ex uh, an exciting new era as additional uh, modernization programs come online. So there'll be new equipment and new weapon systems to uh, teach servicemen and women how to use properly. The important thing for a military liaison department today is understanding their legacy. Understanding that they're the oldest department uh, at Sandia, their mission is extremely important. Uh, what a marvelous mission you have to accomplish I wish you the absolute best. It was a proud moment in my career to have served with you, and I hope the very best going forward. As long as there's one weapon left in the hands of the military, you're gonna need military liaison. Happy 75th anniversary, military liaison. Happy 75th anniversary, military liaison. Happy 75th anniversary to military liaison. I've enjoyed working with you for many years. Happy 75th Anniversary, Military Liaison. Happy 75th Anniversary, Military Liaison. I'll be around for the 100th.